Hello, everybody. I uh, hope you're doing well. Um, thank you very much for joining us for this um, CO2 extract plant tour and webinar uh, as part of Yakima Chief's uh, virtual harvest. Uh, my name is Zoltan, and uh, I'm the director of Key Accounts for Europe. Um, I've been with the company for uh, coming up to four and a half years. However, this is my fifth harvest. But I'm also absolutely delighted to um, have one of my colleagues on this webinar, uh, Carl van Evenhoven, who is our uh, Chief Operations Officer. And Carl has been with us for uh, quite a while. How are you, Carl? Great, Zoltan. Uh, thanks for having me on the, um, the presentation here. I think this will be my uh, 23rd harvest, but the first one I'll be doing virtually. So oh, wow. like the brewers around the world, uh, um, I'm having to do it from afar. Uh, this year I'll be doing it from Belgium and uh, figured the best way to do a presentation is always uh, with the beer. So uh, I'm drinking a, a Duval. Uh, it's wonderful to have the uh, old school Belgian uh, style uh, you know, beers with the new world hops. The Citra Triple Hop is a beer I've really been enjoying over here. So cheers, everyone. Awesome. Cheers. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to. A can of one of our collabs with one of our customers, uh, Verdant. So this is a uh, Cryo Citra uh, Equinot and uh, Cryo Mosaic. So pretty tasty New England IPA. Um, and indeed, this is part of our uh, virtual harvest uh, series. Um, we obviously like to have our customers over in in Yakima uh, to to you know show the farms, meet the people. Uh, but uh, you know now we're we're doing our best uh, virtually to to. Uh, connect our farmers and our facilities to our global customer base uh, this way. So we're, we're delighted to, to, to have you. So I'm just going to launch our um, couple of slides to, to, to help us out um, for this. And here we go. Um, so we'll do a brief company intro, uh, our growers, um, just touch on hop anatomy and uh, our product range. And then we'll talk about uh, CO2 extract, CO2 as a solvent, and then the CO2 hop extraction process. Uh, we're also going to have uh, an extract plant tour video by our colleague, uh, Art Ortega, who is the uh, director of the uh, hop extraction and uh, regulatory compliance. And uh, then we'll, we'll talk a little bit about uh, the brewing benefits and the pack size and the varieties that are, that are available. So um, Yakima Chief, um, our mission is to connect family farms to the world's finest brewers, providing the highest quality hop products and uncompromising customer service for the ultimate benefit of our customers, employees, and growers. Uh, our vision is to be a global supplier of choice uh, who's focused on sustainably produced innovative products. Um, our vision is also to be a responsible neighbor and an asset to our communities, enriching the products, businesses, and lives of everyone we encounter. Um, we are 100% hop grower owned, uh, which we are really uh, proud about. Um, we have uh, the majority of our grower owners based in the state of Washington, but we also have three families based in Oregon. Uh, these are the farmers you can uh, see on the right. Um, and we received the majority of our, of our, of our hops uh, from these guys. However, we also work with uh, 50 further families throughout uh, the Pacific Northwest, including uh, Idaho. And, uh, and that, basic, that is basically our, our uh, total pool. Um, a really quick company evolution here, uh, because um, I think for most of our viewers, probably we're best known for our um, Aroma varieties uh, like Citra, Mosaic, Simcoe, uh, Sabro, Laurel, and Equinot, just to mention a few. Uh, but there, there's there's far more to it. So initially, you know, we, we started off as Yakima Valley Hop Storage, uh, and then uh, we were Yakima Chief Inc. Uh, from 1997, and uh, we've built an extract plant in 1998, and well, started building in 98, and uh, it was finished in 1999, and it's currently in, it's in Sunnyside, Washington, which is about 35 minutes uh, away from Yakima itself. And it was actually Carl who was asked to um, to, to to build and 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 manage that that project. So uh, it's it's uh, 
yeah, well, hopefully one of your babies, Carl, I suppose, or uh, my, my first one, yeah, <laughs> yeah, your first one. Um, and then, um, Yakima Chief Inc. actually merged with Hop Union in 2014, forming YCH Hops, and that's probably a logo that many of you will uh, will recognize. Uh, prior to the merger, uh, both companies were uh, hop grower owned. And they had a bit of a gentleman's agreement that um, Yakima Chief would focus on, uh, you know, larger breweries, macro accounts, and international markets, whereas Hope Union was was primarily focused on on craft. Uh, and uh, but as as craft was growing, and uh, there was more need for kind of better, you know, batch analysis, you know, uh, even even more focus on, on on quality things like that, where Yakima Chief expertise could come into play. They were starting to uh, appear this. This, this really nice match that, that you know the, the two could work well together and indeed that's what happened in 2014 I've joined in 2016 myself and then in 2018 we've, we've rebranded um, the YCH hops to Yakima Chief hops and adapted this kind of uh, navy and, and um, uh, maroon red um, to our logo that now you can see on our boxes this is also a photo of our of our extract plan, but you will be able to see, uh, you know, a proper tour um, by by Art Ortega uh, a couple of slides later. Um, Bring an yeah, atomy of hops. That also, go ahead. Oh, so I was just going to add that. Up. Um, you know, the, the merger also helped, uh, you know, feed the need for uh, craft and American style hops throughout Europe, which uh, we've seen uh, tremendous growth with that. Absolutely, yeah. I think it was uh, it was a, it was it was it was a good merger, <laughs> and I think already yeah. in 2016 when I joined, uh, I, I could I could already sense that it's kind of like one cohesive company. Yeah. So I think that went uh, you know fairly fairly smoothly. Um, yeah. and with, with extract to follow, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> European growth, craft. <laughs> so. Um, so brewing anatomy of hops, uh, obviously, uh, you know, one of the, well, arguably one of the most valuable part of the uh, hop cone is the uh, lupulin glands. That's where we get the uh, resins and essential oils. Uh, the essential oils produce the kind of hoppy character and then uh, resins make up the uh, kind of the, um, the, the, the better uh, character as well as the uh, preservatives. Um, here's another slide about uh, the, the anatomy itself and, and how they're made up. Um, the, the yellow part here, uh, it's, uh, it's really the bitter compounds, uh, which is 10 to 25% depending on the variety. Um, and the, really the blue section is, is, as you can see, the largest part. And during the, uh, the CO2 extraction process, we're able to remove uh, kind of most of that and can capture kind of the, the very valuable parts and kind of concentrate that. There's also a second slide here, a cross section that you know really magnifies the lupulin glands, and we have a second product uh, that's really aimed at uh, you know ca capturing the lupulin glands here. Carl, do you want to mention a word or two? About sure, yeah, I kind of like this slide because it shows that close up of the lupulin gland, and uh, so in that uh, um, zoomed in view, you can see what we're doing in the cryo process. We're cryogenically freezing uh, that gland, and and removing that, and we we do that using liquid nitrogen. So with our experience of cryogenic fluids, uh, that's been a fun process for the team to uh, develop, and uh, a really interesting product that is kind of an in-between product between T90 pellets and extract. So it's a concentrated uh, form of a pellet that you can use um, on the dry hopping side as well as in the kettle. Perfect. Yeah, uh, certainly a really exciting one. Uh, our team uh, have done a similar webinar like this one uh, just a couple of days ago. Um, it includes a tour of our T90 pellet plants as well as the cryo plant. And they, uh, you know, our, our my, my colleague Brian is, is having a conversation with uh, with our pellet plant operator. So if you're curious, please feel free to, to check it out either on the virtual harvest app or, or on, on our YouTube uh, channel. Um, Stepping further, um, you know, hops usage in the brewery. Um, of course, it starts uh, in the boil, uh, which is the kind of fourth vessel here in the uh, in the kind of upper um, part of the image. Um, it, hops can also be added to the whirlpool to to add uh, you know flavor impressions, uh, and of course we have dry hopping, which is added in the uh, fermenters and maturation tanks, depending on you know how you how, how a brewer would like to dry hop. There's also a range of products, a range 
range of hot products that can be added uh, after maturation and even after filtration just to kind of correct some IBUs. Those are mostly advanced products. We're not going to touch on those too much. That's just a uh, mention that there's multiple steps and stages of, uh, of hop application in the brewing process. Everything starts with uh, with uh, with fresh hops. Uh, these are you know the freshly harvested hops that are not kiln yet. Um, they're of course killed afterwards to uh, lose their their moisture, and then we're able to produce these into T90 pellets, cryo hop pellets, and American Noble pellets. For CO2 extract in particular, we're using T90 pellets uh, as a as a kind of the its ingredient, you know, technically we could use, uh, you know, whole leaf hops, but it would be uh, extremely inefficient. So by, by, you know, having the hops compressed into a pellet, uh, we can be far more efficient and produce far more. Um, and then uh, just for info, uh, from, from CO2 hop extract, uh, it, we can produce Ike, Tetra Rho and hop oils, just to mention a few. These are called advanced products or downstream products. So overall, um, CO2 has, uh, has an important uh, place in the overall hop portfolio of, uh, of solutions. Um, be before, uh, I'll, I'll leave it to, to, to Carl to explain how the actual extraction process uh, happens. Um, basically, CO2 hop extract contains the alpha acids, beta acids, and hop oils. Uh, the extraction process filters out the solid particles like the leaf matter while the CO2 is recovered and reused. And uh, this product is primarily used as a kettle ingredient to provide bitterness. Uh, I often receive a question whether it can be used in dry hopping. Um, unfortunately not, not this one. Um, it needs to be... Um, it needs to be flowable um, and uh, it needs a certain temperature. So those, uh, those temperature that, is, that are used during dry hopping are not really uh, suited for, for this product. Uh, so it's really only for the boil, maybe the Whirlpool kind of later additions. And, um, and yeah, um, Carl, can you please talk us through a little bit why, uh, what is uh, super critical, uh, you know, and, and why CO2 is, is such a good uh, extraction solvent. Um, I'm, I've personally been quite, you know, fascinated to find out when I uh, when I started uh, that there's a fourth uh, state. So not only solid, liquid, and vapor, but it's there. There's a fourth state called supercritical, and that's not a, a nasty person who always complains. <laughs> so that's what supercritical is, but but it's actually a fourth state. So uh, yeah, please go ahead. Sure, I'll, I'll start with the graph on the right. Um, of course, CO2, you know, it's in the air, we're breathing it right now, it's in our beer, and it's in the, the vapor form. Um, I think most of you heard of dry ice, so that would be the solid form of CO2. Uh, liquid CO2 is gonna be under a bit higher pressure. Uh, we receive our CO2 at uh, 300 PSI and uh, zero degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and then if you um, continue to increase the pressure and temperature, you can reach the, the supercritical state. And um, I'll explain in the next slide a little bit of, of, of how that conceptually happens. But uh, before I jump into that, I'll talk a little bit about why we use CO2. Um, the, the first one is it's, it's uh, low pressure. So of course, hops, everything we do at Yakuan Chief, uh, we, we really aim at uh, having the best quality and that low temperature extraction process uh, helps preserve not only the alpha, but the, the delicate aromatic hop oils that are present um, the alpha beta in the oil is soluble in the CO2, so um, that's, of course, another big reason why we use CO2. Um, but it's also done in the absence of oxygen. So, of course, oxygen is, is bad for hops and beer. So um, that, that's another uh, nice thing about the process. CO2 is natural, colorless, odorless, tasteless, non-toxic, non-flammable. Um, it's also sterile. So if there's any microbial issues, that's going to be uh, wiped out in the process as well. Um, and then, you know, you can use other solvents to extract hops. And back in the old days, uh, nasty chemicals like hexane and methylene chloride were used, but uh, they've all fallen out of favor for CO2, which is a nice, um, uh, nice green product to use and naturally occurring. So um, next slide, please, Zoltan. Thanks, Carl. And, and even like ethanol was used in the past, or is, is, does that still happen here and there? Uh, there's still a bit of ethanol extraction out there. It tends to pull more of the, the chlorophylls and some of the undesirables. That, that CO2 is nice because it's selective. It's targeting only the alpha, beta, and the oil. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, 
Uh, plus, you know, with the ethanol plant, you have to have explosion proofing and all that kind of stuff. So it's a bit, bit more of a challenge in some ways. Um, but uh, back to CO2. So this is a, a pretty rough diagram I drew up for, I think it was Hot Brew School back in 2015. Uh, but trying to illustrate, um, let's imagine you had a pressure cooker on the stove and you fill it up, you know, most of the way with water and you boil it. And let's say we, we stop that pressure cooker valve. So pressure is going to build. And as pressure builds, the boiling point is going to rise and the pressure is going to rise. So you have to add more heat to continue boiling. And as you boil, the water level comes down and then the density of that vapor phase continues to go up because there's more and more water vapor in that, that gaseous uh, phase on top of the liquid phase. And then imagine you keep boiling until all of a sudden you get down to a point where it's, there's no longer two phases of vapor and liquid. You now have one phase and that's super critical. Wow. The reason it works so well is your solubility has improved because of the pressure and temperature, but it also, the physical state is like a vapor, and, but it's actually a fluid. So it's a low density fluid, so it can flow through a solid matrix like a hot pellet. So it's quite efficient. Um, and uh, next slide, please. Yeah. Um, you can, this is a, a diagram of the extract plant. So as I mentioned, uh, the, pe <clears throat> the pellets are added to the extractor. So that's done for uh, multiple reasons. Uh, you know, for example, in the brewery, you get better efficiency out of a pellet than you do leaf. We do too in the extraction process. Plus we double the density. So we can get twice as much per extractor in the vessel. So it makes our, our annual throughput much higher. So um, from the pelleting plant, we package everything in foils, um, and then we introduce those pellets into the extractors. Uh, from there, we flow the supercritical uh, CO2 through. It goes to a filter, so you have a nice pure extract with no particles. Uh, then it goes up to the separation uh, skid, where we basically just vaporize the CO2 off, and you're left with the extract. And then that CO2 goes to a uh, cold water heat exchanger, recondense back into a liquid and recirculates back to the system. So historically, we've recovered 98 plus percent of our CO2. Uh, the last little bit is lost when we take an extractor offline, we have to vent a bit, but we recently installed a CO2 recovery system. So now we're recovering virtually all of our CO2 and uh, it's been a, a nice uh, program to help with our corporate social responsibility and reduce our carbon footprint. So it's a really nice project that uh, we, we put in last year. Awesome. So just to kind of recap that, if I may, so basically the process starts here in the kind of upper right section with the pellet mill. Uh, those pellets are then filled into the three extraction chambers that we have. Uh, CO2 is, is applied and then uh, we have the various filters here in the kind of uh, upper left side. And once the process is done, the CO2 is, uh, is, is recaptured and then uh, the, the extract is filled into these product tanks and we have then a further blending tank and a filter and then it's getting packaged in here in the bottom left corner. Um, mm -hmm. When my colleague Art will be um, uh, you know, doing the, the video tour uh, in the background, this is probably what you'll be able to, to see uh, when he's kind of talking through our, our product range. But in essence, our buildings are, like you imagine three really big rooms, like one is the kind of where they, the, the kind of uh, pellets are prepare, prepared. Then the second room actually houses the extractor and the third room houses the product tanks, the, the blending tank and uh, the, the, the packaging uh, lines itself. So uh, when you watch it, you'll be able to kind of co connect that there. Um, this is a, a, a really interesting slide that I like. It it's really shows you the, the before and after. So here are the specs on the left side uh, of a normal kind of hop pellet with alpha acids of 15%, beta of 6, 2% oils, uh, and then we have obviously the cellulose, polyphenols, proteins, etc. After CO2 extraction, the same hop uh, from that, that, that pellet, after the CO2 extraction, we get to an alpha of 55, a beta of 18, in 10% of oils, et cetera. So, uh, and, and this is variety specific, of course, but this is just to, to kind of show you that before, after. So it's, it's roughly a, a four times concentration. Um, and uh, Carl, why is CO2 a beautiful thing once again? I, I love this slide. 
Ah, uh, yeah. Well, uh, we we can start here uh, without CO two and beer. You know, it's just not not nearly as good. It doesn't have the mouth feel. Um, <laughs> Um, but you know, again, it's in the atmosphere. Uh, it's 0.04%. It's naturally occurring. Um, and one other nice little benefit is there's a trace amount of CO2 left in the extract after it's been separated. And so there's a little CO2 blanket inside the, the can or the drum when it's packaged. Um, as I mentioned before, the alpha beta and the oil are soluble, but the other things aren't, so it's selective. So you're only getting the components out that you want. Um, and there's minimal waste. Um, um, in the diagram, I didn't mention, the, but the extracted hops, uh, those are pelleted and go out as cattle feed. So it's a, yeah. it's a very low waste process. Um, and then on the brewing side, it makes the brewery uh, more efficient. Uh, you know, with all the deliverables we'll talk about in a minute, but one of the big ones in the brew house is improved yield because you don't have the solid, um, you know, hops left behind absorbing all the beer. Absolutely. Cool. Well, uh, why don't we play the video to our viewers that, that Art and our team have prepared, and then we can uh, wrap up with, uh, with the actual brewing benefits. Um, so here we go. Hi, I'm Art Ortega. I'm the Director of Hop Extraction and Regulatory Compliance for Yakima Chief Hops. We're here to tour the extract plant as well as the packaging plant, so come follow me. Hi, we're at the mill room right now, the extract plant. Before we go on to the tour, I want to introduce Pablo Nava. Pablo uh, is our 20-year employee. He's our plant lead for the extract plant. Say hi, Pablo. Hi, everyone. Do you want to talk about the uh, mill room or? No, I'll let you talk, Art. Oh, OK. I guess I'll be doing most of the talking. Hi, we're at the mill room right now, where we typically stage our pellets. After staging, we will then take the raw pellets and put it into our lower bin, eventually transfer it into the extract room inside the extractor vessel. And then after extraction uh, online time of about four hours, we will then vacuum dispense and transfer it into the gray bin for repelletization. Now I'm gonna talk to you about our fairly new CO2 recovery plan. We're essentially taking the vented CO2 gas that would otherwise go into atmosphere. Uh, instead, we're collecting it into these two buffer tanks. We got a high pressure and a low pressure buffer tank. At the end of that cycle, we are producing beverage grade CO2 at an average of about 565 kilos per extractor. The efficiency of the system is 90%. Pablo, we'll see you later. Let's go check out the extract plant. So from the uh, mill room, the raw pellets are transferred on the upper bin. And from the upper bin, we can divert the flow of the pellets in any of our three extractors. Each extractor holds about 2,000 pounds of raw material. That's roughly an acre of hops or about 10 bales. From the extractor, the product will come out and flow. It will then be filtered by any of our two uh, high pressure inline filter. From the heat exchanger, we're heating that extract further. And as it goes into our next vessel, that's where we get the separation of CO2 gas and the extract product. The extract will drop below the vessel. Typically, we'll leave it about a third full to allow it to continually gas off. Meanwhile, the CO2 gas will go, come down to this pipe and it will get recondensed re back into liquid for reuse. Hi, we're now uh, here in packaging, but before we continue with the process, I just want to quickly introduce to you Javier Serrano. Javier is our packaging supervisor and he has been with us for the last 20 years. Javi, say hi to the camera. Thanks, Javi. The extract from the other room will then go to any of our four product tanks above. From there, we can package the extract into our tins or in drums. These are the different tin sizes that we carry. As you can see, we have a four kilo, a three kilo that would fit in that box. And then you have our half kilo and one kilo that would fit in this box. And then here's our two kilo tin that would fit into this uh, packaging. Along with our extract tin containers, we also have uh, some advanced products here with our Tetra and ISO 30. These are samples of the hop extract that we've produced at our facility. Thank you for joining us in this tour of the extract plant, the CO2 recovery plant, and our packaging room. Hope to see you guys soon after the COVID situation is done. Thank you.
So that was awesome from, from Art uh, and, and pretty cool to see the building and, and definitely some colleagues who've been with us for a, for a long, long time. Um, I'm, I'm sure they, they just like you know, working there at the, at the plant. Uh, Carl, how many people work actually at, at our extract plant? Roughly, if you don't know the exact. Actually, a pretty minimal crew. Um, oh. There's actually eight uh, eight operators, supervisors, um, plus a couple extras on days because there's more activities on days. One mechanic and uh, three in packaging. So it's a pretty small crew to uh, crank through. We can do about eight million pounds of hops annually. So wow. it's 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 pretty efficient, automated facility. Cool. So uh, very quickly, then, just to kind of summarize uh, and, uh, and and highlight some of the benefits, uh, you know, for the brewer, um, the the analysis methods for uh, for CO two extract is uh, UV spectra or HPLC. Uh, HPLC is roughly ninety percent of the UV value. It's uh, it's predominantly used in Europe as a, as a, an analysis method. Uh, we must know the required method before uh, packaging it by GMA fill, uh, which is uh, the grams of alpha. It's a pretty important unit for us. And then uh, the drums are filled to 200 kilos, and then the customer bases, uh, doses based on the alpha percent of, of that batch if they buy the drums. Um, we obviously produce the, the GMA tins, uh, which have a specific grams of alpha content. And just as an example here at the bottom, your 150 GMA tin will make 10 barrels of beer, 45 IBUs. So that's some pretty cool um, efficiency there. Utilization of, uh, of CO2 extract is 35%. So it's, uh, it's better than pellets and definitely better than, uh, than, than leaf hops. And uh, the varietal characteristics are maintained throughout the extraction process. So that's a pretty cool thing. So it's the same humulone, cohumulone ratio, oil profile, et cetera. Um, this is just a slide to kind of highlight uh, those, um, those utilizations. So it's about 35% for CO2 extract. There's some other hot products that are higher, but uh, yeah, they're, they're, we're not going to mention about, you know, too much about those in some, you know, might have slightly, uh, you know, uh, harsher bitterness, et cetera. Some can provide better light stability and so forth, but uh, we'll stick to CO2 extract for now. So benefits is obviously dosing efficiency. Uh, we're working with only quarter of the mass. If you recall the, the previous slide when I, I showcased the kind of before after of the specs, kind of starting with 15% alpha and getting to 55. Um, there's uh, reduced wort loss because, um, you know, compared to pellets or leaf, because there's no sponge effects of, of yeah, those, uh, those pellets and leaves. So there, there's more liquid in, in, the, uh, in the brew kettle. Uh, also, uh, there's reduced foam formation during the boil. And then uh, there's reduced vegetal and polyphenol flavor. Uh, it's also a very consistent product. Um, I, Carl, I understand that even like, uh, you know, uh, crop year to crop year, uh, it's and, and batch to batch, uh, the CO2 extract is like pretty consistent. Is that, is that the case? Yeah, it, it helps with beer consistency, and uh, the main reason uh, for that consistency is we're, we're usually producing pretty large lots, so mm -hmm. there'll be a, um, a number of different uh, bale and pellet lots to go into that, so you don't have the lot-to-lot -lot, uh, uh, variance, which we, you know, we strive to reduce that variance uh, through pelleting anyway, because we're doing blending there. This is just one additional step of blending, um, so it's, it's, it's helpful in that regard as well. Cool. Uh, and one other little anecdote, this might be a wives tale, but I've had several brewers tell me this. Um, if you're making an all extract edition in the early first edition at 60 or 90 minutes, however long your boil is, literally, you know, in a 250 hectoliter brew kettle, just throwing in a little handful of pellets helps create nucleation sites for the extract to disperse in the kettle during boil. Mm. Whether or not that's True, I don't know, but like I said, several brewers have told me their utilization goes up when throwing in a handful of pellets. So just thought I'd offer that tidbit up. Interesting. Yeah, that's that's a, that's a valuable one. I have a, a slide later about kind of how to convert a recipe, and uh, and and you know for for that particular conversion, we can actually mention that maybe a little bit of uh, pellets can be also added together with the extract. But uh, certainly a major benefit is uh, shipping, storage, and handling. You know, obviously you're working with quarter of the mass 
if you were to co compare to, uh, to to pellets. So there's there's less stuff to store uh, and uh, and obviously less uh, things to 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 ship. Um, it also has a really strong stability. Um, it has a five year shelf life. Um, potentially longer as well. Um, I think Carl, you've you've told me once that you're you're keeping some samples from the very first run uh, from 1999, yeah. and and that's yeah, the very first itself. pack that's out. That's crazy. In, yeah, in February '99, and uh, so I had that sample on my desk for years, not even in cold storage. And then uh, uh, when I moved down to the pellet side, Ken Mortensen had it for several more years, and Arts had it for the last several years, and we'll pull a, a sample out of that every now and then and analyze it and it's still pretty steady after sitting at room temperature and being opened a number of times and people looking at it and whatnot. So it's, it's uh, extract is, is stable stuff. That's pretty cool. Uh, so keep it. Let, let's see what it's like in another five, 10 years. <laughs> um, I got to check it out next time I'm back in Sunnyside. Um, and uh, yeah, it can be stored in, in ambient temperature. Of course, we would always recommend that it's also part of a cold stored warehouse. But you know, if, you're, uh, if you don't have that, uh, that, that luxury, it can be stored in, in, in ambient temperature as well while staying stable. Um, and uh, yeah, once again, uh, you know, the, we have, you know, extended shelf life, you know, pellets are three years, extract is five, potentially more. Uh, we have increased alpha utilization with that 35%. Uh, we can add it in kind of the late boil uh, stages for more kind of flavor impressions. Um, it's, it's ideal for adding IBUs to the beer without more and more pellets to be added to the brew kettle. Uh, it has the same varietal characteristics as the, the, the pellets would so there's there's no real real difference um, the the super critical extraction works well for uh, for aroma varieties uh, it, it preserves you know all the oil uh, characteristics so it's not just for high alpha varieties and, and overall just kind of think sustainability with this you know it's it's quarter of the of the compared to to pellets uh, you got uh, you know uh, better utilization it, there's less stuff to store less stuff to ship um, it's, uh, the shelf life's longer and, uh, and yeah, you're even a bit more efficient with, uh, in terms of, uh, you know, better yields out of the brew kettle. Um, how to use yeah, it? Yeah, Zoltan, uh, if, if I could add to, um, you know, I, if there's a take home message in this presentation, I think it's, you know, the varietal characteristics and the sustainability side of it, as well as the quality side, you know, uh, each year. Uh, home brewers vote on uh, through Zymergy magazine on the best 50 best beers in the United States, and uh, a, lo a lot of those beers on that top 50, even that top 10 list, are using hop extract. And they may be using it early in the boil, they may be using it late in the boil, um, but you, you still have that. Uh, if you're going to use a Simcoe extract, you're going to get Simcoe characteristics in that beer. Wow, cool. Yeah, but actually, on that note, like why do you think it's not like more popular in craft or not not yet uh, obviously it's starting and some some brewers in the u.s are adopting it but what are your thoughts you know why hasn't it you know taken off more <laughs> uh, that's a great question and i, I think it's um you know uh, back in the, the you know days where we didn't have a lot of craft obviously the big brewers were using it and craft wasn't really um a, you know large percentage of the the overall beer production yet so it had this stigma of ah that's just a, a product that big boys use um, but uh, you know like I said many of these uh, craft brewers that have grown and grown uh, they've recognized the same efficiencies that the big guys do and they're not sacrificing quality for it so um, it's it's something that I think will continue to grow and I think we'll see it grow um, in Europe as well like we've seen it in the U.S. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. Perfect. I'm glad we covered that. So, so how to use it if if you if you've not yet. Um, so, uh, you know, obviously the first couple of points are really for kind of uh, slightly smaller breweries or craft breweries. Uh, really, the the larger macros would have a, a hop dosing vessel. Uh, but if if you're kind of more manually adding it to the kettle, um, it's just in a food grade tin. So of course, use just a can opener to to kind of open it up. Uh, then it can be added to the word grant. Uh, it can also be poured into the kettle. Um, we have you know many customers who just either put it on the brew kettle itself first, uh, just to kind of 
uh, I guess, uh, to, to, to melt it up so it's kind of softened, then it can be poured out. There's other brewers who actually open the tin and then just throw the extract in together with the, the, the tin into the boil because it's food grade. And then as, 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 as the boil of the word happens, it would just kind of wash it out. So it's, uh, it's pretty, pretty easy. Um, you know, we would recommend using heat resistant gloves and tongs if you're, if you're handling it. Um, but yeah, it's actually possible to kind of freeze it and push it out even. And, uh, and also another common one is kind of get some warm wort into the bucket, pour the extract into it, mix it in and then throw it back into the kettle. Um, so there's a couple of methods, but, but it's, it's, it's pretty straightforward, basically just, just get it into the boil somehow. That's the, that's the main one. Um, and in terms of calculating, uh, you know, how much uh, to, to do it, we'd really like to invite you to visit our website and our brewing tools. Uh, we have this specific section set up just solely for this reason. You can see the, the link there above. And, um, you know, we, there's kind of two ways to go about this. You would either be converting a recipe that's been built around T90 pellets, um, and, and then you can enter that existing recipe. So hop pellets, 30% utilization, let's say they, uh, the hops they use there have 15% alpha and you usually add 24 kilograms of it. If you were to convert this to extract, then you know, you'd basically choose extract from the drop-down menu, it has 35% utilization, and then at the bottom it tells you that for that recipe conversion, you actually need 3,088 GMAs. And the way you could add that is either having 10 300 GMA tins, or for example, three 1,000 GMA tins. And for that 88 GMA missing, in terms of uh, product availability and tin size and GMAs, um, the, you know, Art has, has mentioned this in the video uh, a little bit, uh, but here's a, here's a photo in the bottom left. Um, basically, uh, our smallest tin is a half a kilo, which is right above the Yakima Chief logo on top of the box. Then we have a one kilo, a two kilo, a three and a four. And the GMAs that we're able to provide, so the grams of alpha is, um, is 150, 300, 500, 1000 and 2000. And depending on which variety they're produced from, we, we, we can see like which tin size we would, we would be most appropriate to fill it in. Uh, typically 150 GMA goes into half a kilo, 300 GMA usually goes into one kilo and, and so forth. Uh, but this, this also depends on the, on the variety because some are a little bit more concentrated and, and the others need a, a bit more space. Um, and the varieties that we can, you know, bit, technically we could produce it almost from, from any variety, but of course it makes sense if the, you know, the more alpha you have, um, cause it's a, it's a bittering solution. Um, we can certainly do a generic extract, which can be uh, any variety or a mix of varieties. Uh, CTZ is probably the number one uh, in terms of acreage and, and, uh, and extract use. So that's Columbus Tomahawk Zeus, uh, just same variety, but three different brand names. And then we can do Citra, we can do Equinot, which are dual purpose varieties and are you know, really kind of more famous for, um, for dry hopping. But in case a brewer has a beer that it's a single hop Citra and they actually add that Citra into the boil, um, they can consider replacing that 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 recipe with a citra extract. So that that is possible to uh, to to do. Then you know, uh, continuing on from them, you know, Hercules still important. Nugget, Pato, Mosaic, Simcoe, Warrior, and we just added other because technically we could do other as well. If there's you know a specific request that you know it, it is a variety that you must have, uh, it can be done. And also in terms of product availability. Carl, what's that in the upper right corner there? Yeah, thanks for having that photo, uh, Zoltan. Uh, I just wanted to say, you know, the availability of, of our products will be um, improving further in, in Europe. That's, uh, uh, we're in the midst of building a, a distribution uh, center here in Belgium to uh, service brewers throughout Europe and beyond. So uh, uh, that's, that's why I'm sitting here in Belgium today, because, uh, working on this project and uh, we should be online first quarter of uh, 2021 and uh, we'll be following up um, that with e-commerce as well. So uh, the vision is uh, need a box of some uh, 
pellets or extract, you can just get right online and order that. In the meantime, we'll be taking care of customers as we have been uh, the old fashioned way, picking up the phone, but uh, e-commerce is, is coming as well. Fantastic and yeah, exciting and, and thanks for uh, all your work so far uh, on, on the new warehouse. And uh, I mean, that, that was it really uh, from us. Uh, we would like to um, thank you for your attention and for joining us here. I would like to thank uh, Art, uh, Melissa and uh, the rest of the team, um, Javier down there uh, and, and, and for their work. And uh, yeah, let us know if we can help you with any extract and hope you enjoyed the, the tour and introduction that actually Acuma Chief has, uh, you know, a facility like this and a product range like this. Um, and uh, yeah, thank, thank you very much again and uh, keep safe. We look forward to seeing you in Yakima, hopefully next harvest in person. Yep, and uh, hopefully harvest keeps going well. It's been going well. Uh, Zoltan, thanks for having me. Sunnyside Yakima, cheers. Miss you guys. So, uh, um, yeah, we'll see everyone later. Thank you, Carl. Bye. Okay, bye-bye.